You may be seated. Honorable members and our distinguished guests, both here in the chamber and uh, in the marquee, where our overflow is, good afternoon. Let me take this opportunity to make some acknowledgments. Uh, the Honorable Premier of the Free State Legislature, Mkoli Sidugwana, the Deputy Speaker of the Free State Legislature, Honorable Lucima Pena, the Honorable Chief Whip of the Free State Legislature, Ms. Saram Leleki, the Leader of Government Business, Honorable Totoma Kume, members of the Free State Legislature, members of the Executive Council, traditional leadership present, members of the National Parliament, ten institutions, as the Ambassador from the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Her Excellency, Ms. Maureen Josefina Morena Merida, leaders of the local government and SALGA, provincial commissioner of the police services, commissioner of the correctional services, our banking institutions, members that we might have here, leaders of government entities, the German legislature and the management team, business leaders here present, civil society organizations, members of the faith-based organizations, media executives and media houses present and those covering the sitting digitally. The people of the Free State present here and those following us online and other media where the sitting is broadcasted. The distinguished guests, I welcome you all to the sitting of the Free State, Free State Legislature this afternoon. To let the House know that before we proceed, uh, once more, the economic freedom fighters are not here, and I don't know, I did not receive the uh, leave of absence this time around. Honorable members, before we proceed with the business of the day, I wish to inform the House that the business of the House today is also to afford the Honorable MEC for Finance to table the Provincial Annual Budget for 2024-25 as required by Section 27, Subsection 2 of the Public Financial Management Act No. 1 of 1999. On our orders, honorable members, we are going to have the reply by the that took place yesterday. Honorable members, without further ado, I will now, now call upon the Premier to proceed with the reply on the State of the Province Address. Honorable Premier. Speaker of the Legislature, Honorable Members of the Legislature and the Executive Council, Marena Lidikosi, Ambassadors of Q leaders of the African National Congress and the Alliance, leaders
leaders of uh, the and representatives of other political parties, the people of our province, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Speaker, <coughs> it was in this house last year when we called upon our citizens to become agents of change and contribute their energies to the development of our province. We humbly requested the unwavering support of all well-meaning citizens of our province in tackling corruption and malpractices. We remain grateful to all men and women of the free state who heeded the call, this call and made themselves available <coughs> for this noble endeavor. Working to cause courage of convictions with a view of effectuating decisive action to correct the wrongs of the past and launch our province irrevocably on the path of doing more together. <coughs> We're making significant progress in, this, in, the, in the past. We have begun leveraging our strategic location to fuel fundamental socioeconomic development. Our singular focus remains ensuring quality housing, safe learning environments for our children, accessible and effective health care, empowered communities, and equal economic opportunities for all. And indeed, we have started to make significant strides, as announced in the SOPA, these interventions to enhance the quality of life of our citizens will unfold in earnest in areas, among others like Kharib and other uh, districts. I stand before you with the greatest humility to respond to matters raised by different political parties represented here. In particular, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude and respect to members of the African National Congress in this house, who right, I would rightly recognize, who recognize the strides we have made in the last 30 years to truly change the face of our society from a broken, oppressive, and, racial, and racially divided one to a non-racial, non-sexist, and democratic society that recognizes injustices of the past and heal our hitherto fractured society. As I stated during my inauguration, this responsibility comes with a profound sense of party political affiliation. Firstly, in all material times, this response will genuinely address all concerns that our people raise, even if some of the parties represented in this house will seek to perpetuate their survival purely on the basis of negativity, pessimism, and cynicism. <clears throat> we have never failed to acknowledge that our province faced significant challenges, the bulk of which are structural and historical. As can be seen in the legacy of apartheid and colonial special planning, we sought to consign the majority to the periphery, Madam Speaker, that the honor some reading materials to help him understand where we're coming from. Because we can't move forward if we do not understand where we're coming from and understand our history in the best possible way for us to move forward and understand yesterday when the men were acting and were actors as a country in 1994, <clears throat> we committed ourselves to building and reconciling and building a better society, but not to allow other people to recognize their mistakes and accept their faults and understand that this, where we are, did not start in 1994. It started in many, many years. And Colin Bundy, in his poverty in South Africa, past and present, and in page, from page 49 to page 53, characterizes this clearly when he, he wrote. He was dealing with the cause of uh, poverty in South Africa. And he says, in short, against competition from black workers and created jobs for unemployed whites, 
They also ensure, ensure that these policies that white poverty declined sharply. By 1936, the Department of Labor and Social Welfare announced that there was no longer a surplus of white labor. The solution of the poor white question had profound and lasting implications for black poverty. African mine workers were frozen out of skilled workers, uh, work of not because they lacked the competencies to do it, but precisely because they were or soon would be competent. Other African workers and locked into a low wage regime deliberately maintained by state policy. In the interwar years, reducing white poverty became a political priority. In addressing it, the state increasingly defined the relationship living for the white. When we speak of poverty, in isolation of understanding the history of poverty in South Africa, we will be misled that uh, every time and I want to deal with this. Every time members of the DA come to the podium, they speak of where we govern every time. Let me just bring this, the historical fact that you need to know. Kayalicha is in, but it is not of Cape and remote from the shopping and manufacturing sectors whose most uh, where most of the jobs are to be found. In many ways, then, then Kayelicha is sometimes uh, re regarded as an economic and racial and cultural enclave. Kayelicha residents are largely redundant as unskilled workers, yet they are valued as consumers. They are isolated from the city's economic epicenter, yet are decisively present as citizens and voters. They are constructed through racially discoursed industry, yet they are themselves object of tourism. Grunaba, Ralph and Henry, have powerfully described saying, and the ways in which is present, its present day racial geography continues to be reaffirmed and reasserted extremes of wealth and poverty and the irreconcilable realities that exist inside of these extremes mark everyone each day in ways that are not always clear, conscious or visible. It feels like a city that is ready to burst with the violent force of the irrepressible realness of its history. Mostly everything remains color-coded according to previous apartheid race categories. I'm raising this because about history, but the fact of the matter is what happened in, in the past has a direct uh, uh, impact in what is happening now. This is visible in every sphere of society from who works the roads and sidewalks. Now these members who are here are not actors, honorable members. They are members who actually understand what poverty is, what inequality means, what injust injustice is to them. And they have no right, they have no reason to come here and act as members have been saying. These are members who were born, some of these members were born in townships, most of them. In areas, I was born in Kutwano, 97 block one, a dusty town, township, just a throw away from uh, an ordinance race, which is one of the oldest mining uh, city. And we did not enjoy anything except to make the life better for ourselves. We had to make sure that we understand of going to bed hungry. And some of you have no understanding of that. Because in your schools, you were taught that uh, blacks are inferior. 
I will, I will, I'm going to tell you about this speech in 1985, on the 18th of August, from P.W. Botter. And some of you were taught this history in your schools. And some of you seated here, grow, growing up, understanding, of course, when you see us as people who can do anything good, it always has to be you. And that is why Honorable Member uh, uh, Peter Way had the guards to say that uh, a member, uh, the member should come, uh, William, should come and read with her the Bella Bill. Because alone, you are not good enough to understand what is written. But we are only good when we are taught and, and there is a white person who has to read. These are some of the things that we've got to get out of our system. But you keep bringing them in the house. You keep creating any situation that we are inferior. You see us as inferior. And there's nothing else that you see in us. But I will, I will, I will, I will talk to you about this. Well, it was very interesting that uh, Honorable Member Jacobson said, uh, the Democratic Alliance shall deal with me outside the African National Congress. I understood what you meant. Of course, uh, physically, that was not possible. Anyway, uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, that, uh, that you would not even, but to even think that you would be able to take and separate me from the ANC, outside the ANC, I understand what you meant. Whilst Mr. Mahashule deals with me from within the ANC. This is what uh, PW and majority, black majorities, we are all minorities. And if you look at what is happening now, what the DA is part of the creation of men rule them, and it's not going to happen this time. What remains clear is that he is uh, very 